going on here, guys? Why aren't you happy? I've been fertilizing you so well, and, and I even put biostimulants over here. I don't know. If you need shade on your deck or patio this summer, check out Toya Grid Pergola Kits. You source the lumber locally and can assemble this modular system in as little as 30 minutes. Check the video description for links to videos and more information about Toya Grid. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud, and today I'm going to talk about brown spots that are in my lawn, and hopefully it will help you, because I see a lot of questions from people on Facebook groups, they post pictures, people email me pictures all the time. I'm just going to show you some of the situations that I'm dealing with and give you my opinion, and we'll see if we could figure out what they are. When I started my 2019 lawn care program, the first thing I said was there are two rules about lawn care. So the first is grow the best lawn that you are willing to afford. And that's afford in terms of time and money. And my second principle is to eliminate threats. That is everything that's trying to kill your lawn and undo what you did in rule number one. So rule number two is dealing with threats. And that's what we're dealing with now in the summertime. All the fertilizer you put down in the spring hopefully is doing its job and the grass is well nourished. Now it's just got to get through the heat of the summer. And here is number one. This one's really bad. I mean, it's dead all the way down to the ground. You know what caused that one? Dogs. Why does everyone always blame dogs? How do I know? Well, I've got two dogs in my yard. That certainly looks like a spot where something was spilled. And I didn't spill anything, so it had to be dog urine. This is another spot where they notoriously get me. They come right out the door over here and they just go right down on the grass at the end of the night. So this always burns out. But it's not all dog urine. Now in here, these brown areas are really not my turf type tall fescue. This, if you recall, this area here had a lot of poa annua in the spring. Now poa annua does not like the heat, so it drops its seeds and then it just goes away. And it begins to look like this. See, here's a seed left over from Poa Annua. Doesn't like the summer. Turns brown. Here's another area of my grass that's brown. Now this one is probably Poa Trivialis. This was an area that had Poa Triv early in the spring, and it doesn't like the heat either. So this is not dead, but this is dormant. This will come back when the temperatures cool off a little bit but it is unsightly this time of year. Now coming over to this nice shady spot, this spot is Poa Triv, but it doesn't get the heat until later in the day. That's when the sun will be on it. So this one is still green, but it's a lime green, and that's why you can tell it's Poa Trivialis. But it is going dormant down in there. Now this spot here may have been caused by me. You can see this is Nutsedge right here, this plant. And you can see it's dying. I sprayed it. So I may have gotten collateral damage at the same time. That happens if you're going to spray weeds in the summertime. One last brown spot situation. It's like my neighbor has here. You're probably going, what the heck? Well, this is what happens if you spray weeds in a heat wave. But over here on my slope, I call this my slope. It's the only real sloping part of my yard. It's a gentle slope, believe me, compared to what some of you deal with. But over here, this is turning brown again. And this happened to me last year in August. I just realized that it was just horrible. So it's happening a little bit earlier this year. But let's take a closer look at this. So this section is seemingly good turf type tall fescue, but it's got dying grass all around it. So taking a closer look at it, here's a grass blade you can see has spots on it in the middle of the blade. Now what that is, is that's an indication of a fungus. So this area has a disease all throughout it actually. And eventually these grass blades will just completely shrivel up and they will 
die just like the rest of them here so I need to treat it well my 2019 lawn care calendar includes two rounds of fungicide preventative fungicide now I use propiconazole and I spray it I get it in this gallon jug it costs $90 which is expensive I know now I've already put down two applications preventative applications of propiconazole that's before there was any disease present now I've got disease over there so that means one of two things either the disease that I'm dealing with is not on the label for propiconazole or it's resistant whatever that strain is is resistant to propiconazole and there's a way they tell you to fix that since propiconazole is a group 3 fungicide what they say is switch up your fungicides go with something different use something other than another group 3. I decided to go with Scott's Disease X. Now Disease X is an active ingredient called azoxystrobin. Now I know, although it doesn't say it on the bag, I don't know why Scott's you should put it on the bag, but I guess they think fungicide group is a professional topic. Aww. But azoxystrobin is group 11, whereas propiconazole is group 3. So it's okay to mix this with propiconazole and hopefully this will treat my disease better than propiconazole will. Now all fungicides come with two settings, one for a preventative rate and the other one for a curative rate. Preventative is two pounds per thousand and the curative is four pounds per thousand. Generally it's twice as much. Now this is a 10 pound bag so I'm going to put it down at the curative rate four pounds per thousand that means it's going to cover 2,500 square feet which is fine with me because I happen to know that that area is exactly 2,600 square feet because I measured it and that's what I've been treating with biostimulants this year in my lawn care program. Now let's just say I was going to put this down at the preventative rate which is two pounds per thousand. This bag would cover 5,000 square feet. For me, my 14,000 square foot lawn, I would need three bags of Disease X. They're $20 a bag, that would be $60 for an application. Now with propiconazole, although that gallon cost me $90, I can get nine applications divided by 90, so it's $10 an application instead of $60 an application. I always go with the cheapest first, and if that doesn't work, I'll go with the more expensive. Some people like to do both every time. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do one, and if there's a problem, I'll do the other. Promise me you'll be happier now, okay? You get better. You just think healthy thoughts. That's all. That's all you gotta do. Think healthy thoughts. Okay? Alright. Love you. Bye.